Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Cisco Quick Hit video. Cisco Quick Hit videos provide you with maximum content in just a little bit of time so you can go about your busy day a little wiser. I'm Thomas Lewis and I'm an SA with Atlanta Select and today we're gonna to talk about and demo Cisco's approach to establishing identity and device trust in the workforce with a zero trust design. To understand what zero trust is, we must first understand today's IT landscape. The world is constantly changing, and with that change comes new demand for how we do business. As an example, COVID-19 forced businesses to create more remote knowledge workers to ensure business operations. This was a change that was simple on paper, but in reality, it introduced major hurdles for IT that continue today. Just to name a few, increased complexity where knowledge workers moved from their traditional cubicles sitting behind corporate firewalls to at-home networks, coffee shops, and parks, whatever these new networks are, they weren't built or blessed by corporate IT. And these at-home lands, coffee shops, or parks quickly increased surface attacks by introducing their networks, their users, their devices, and their security, if they have any, with your business. And with the introduction of knowledge workers, BYOD, IoT, and cloud, many IT organizations no longer see exactly who is logging into their environments and are those devices that they're leveraging compliant. You know, my father always liked to say, trust, but verify. I'd like to say that I've simplified and improved his approach by simply saying verify. This, in essence, is zero trust. Users, devices, and the applications that make our businesses aren't trusted, even if they're connected to a managed corporate network or were previously verified. In most modern enterprise environments, corporate networks consist of segments, VLANs, hybrid cloud, mobile environments, and IoT devices. The traditional approach today would mean simply trusting the devices on this network simply because they're there, which makes no sense in today's landscape. Instead, Cisco's approach to zero trust leverages Duo to verify a person's identity and ensure the device or devices they are leveraging meet business standards. Once these parameters are met, Duo provides access to the approved applications. Our approach for zero trust is built on three steps. First, establish trust. This is the focal point for our conversation today. We establish trust by verifying user identity and the health and posture of the device they are leveraging. Device posturing can provide firmware, iOS recommendations, updates, or if the device has been tampered with or potentially compromised. Next, we enforce trust based on access, providing least privileged access. This means users have access to exactly what they need and nothing that they don't. And finally, we continuously verify the users and devices are the same for the duration of the session of that traffic and make sure that we aren't introducing any risk. If a compromise is detected, then we change the trust level and prohibit access. Think of it like going to a local bar and the bartender always checking ID anytime someone wants to go up and get another drink and they're also checking their demeanor to make sure that that person is safe and the environment is safe as well before giving them another beverage. So Duo's multi-factor authentication, or MFA, can help secure your workforce by verifying user identities and establishing device trust before granting access to applications. It's this layer of security that protects you against phishing attacks, compromised credentials, while providing visibility and security for BYOD. And how do you verify trust in the workforce? Well, Duo prevents breaches caused by stolen passwords by verifying identities using multi-factor authentication. This adds another layer of security to ensure your users are who they say they are before they're granted access. And Duo provides visibility into the devices you are leveraging or their posture so you can ensure that these devices are running up-to-date software, perhaps encrypted or passcode protected. By understanding the posture of the device, you can decide if it's trusted. And finally, Duo quickly responds to potential breaches of trust because it enforces access policies for every application that limits access to trusted users and devices. With that, Duo can block any access attempt that doesn't meet your security standards. So let's take a look at a couple demos. First, let's see how the push mechanism works within Duo. Let's say that I'm a user and I'm trying to access Outlook. 
I can come in and enter my appropriate credentials and go to sign on. Immediately, Duo comes in for that extra layer of authentication. I have the choices of sending a push, which will come to my phone. I can have Duo call me to make sure I am who I say I am, or I can use my Duo app to enter in a passcode. I can even use an authenticator security key if I have one to handle the security mechanism. In this case, we can go with a push. So I'll say, send me a push. And immediately my phone is gonna pop up. My app says a logon request to access the Outlook web app. By selecting this, I can hit approve, but let's say that this wasn't me perhaps, and uh, I don't understand who's trying to log on. I can select deny, and then I can update to say if this seems fraudulent or if this was a mistake and alert IT if there's something suspicious going on and they need to do some uh, additional diving. In this case, I'm gonna cancel and I can hit approve. Once I'm approved, I now have access to my, uh, my email. So let's switch gears for a second and take a look at what we can do in terms of device health. In this case, I'm trying to, to access uh, Microsoft. I can log in again with my credentials, putting in the appropriate password, but now we see the Duo device health application opening up and it's checking my system to make sure everything is of compliance. And what we can quickly see is that I do not have my firewall enabled. From within Duo, I can start the process for enabling this. So by clicking on this link, I can up my, open up my firewall preferences. I can make the appropriate changes. I can turn on my firewall and now I can refresh my browser. My device health check will run again to make sure that I am compliant. And now I'm back to the point where I can send a push to authenticate and gain access. So I hope this demo and overview was uh, made a whole lot of sense. Uh, below, we can go to cisco.com slash go slash MFA for more details around Duo and also setting up a demo if you're interested. Please make sure to reach out to your security team uh, within Cisco if you have any additional questions. Thanks so much and have a great day.